Hello everyone, welcome to the BookFlick YouTube channel. Now in this video, we are going to discuss about the phases of compiler. So as by name, it is suggesting that phases. Phases consists of different stages which are interrelated to each other. Suppose there is one stage and it is having the input and it is generating another output which is considered as one input to the next phase and it is also generating the output which will be considered as the input of the third stage. So in this way this phases goes on. So in this way we are going to understand the phases of compiler. So the first point is that the compilation process is a sequence of various phases. So as you have seen here that uh, the phases is nothing but the sequence of different stages. So here are three stages we have discussed uh, one by one input. So it is the meaning of first point. So let us move to the second point is that each phase takes input from its previous stage. So as by uh, definition, as by definition phases means a sequence of various stages means they are interrelated to each other by some inputs and outputs. So there is one input to first stage and it is generating the output and which is considered as the input to the next stage and it is also generating one output which is also generating considered as the input to the next stage now at the final it is generating the target code so in this way each phase takes input from its previous stage and that has its own way of representation of source program means if it, if you are providing the source program to the first stage okay if you are providing the source program to the first stage and it is going to the next stage so it must be representing the source program at its own way and it is generating the output in the same way and that is the representation which is taking as the input to the next phase uh, in this way each and every stage is generating the source program at its own way in its own way so this is nothing but the its a way of representation of source program so and it feeds the output to the next phase of the compiler so by name it is also suggesting that there is several stages which is taking the input from the first stage giving the output and this is considered as the input from the first stage to the next stage so feeds its output to the next phase of the compiler so basically these two points must have to be remembered in order to learn the phases of compiler means you will be you will be having the concepts of phases of compiler how it goes on so basically it is nothing but the sequence of phases sequence of phases or stages now before understanding the first phase of the compiler that is the lexical analyzer okay lexical analyzer phase you will have to consider you will have to consider the two terms that is lexemes and tokens now here it is written lexemes is nothing but the specific instance of a token uh, okay and token is nothing but the sequence of characters that can be treated as a single logical entity or single unit so let us take one example then you will be understanding these lexemes and tokens concepts so suppose you are writing a c program and you are giving one a program suppose you have written a line of code int a semicolon that is you have declared the variable a of integer data type so in the same way you will be writing the keyword okay what is int int is nothing but a keyword what is a a is nothing but the identifier as we have learned it and what is semicolon semicolon is nothing but the punctuation okay so now so int a and semicolon so now we will be understanding what are they what are they so move on to the int int is nothing but the lexemes int is nothing but the lexemes number one lexeme 
एंड ए ए इज नथिंग बट द अनदर लेग्जिम्स नंबर टू लेग्जिम्स एंड सेमी कॉलम इज नथिंग बट द नंबर थ्री लेग्जिम्स सो इन दिस वे वी हैव रिटेन द थ्री लेग्जिम्स इन आवर सोर्स प्रोग्राम एंड व्हाट आर दे द आंसर ऑफ व्हाट आर दे इज की वर्ड आइडेंटिफायर एंड पंक्चुएशन एंड इट इज कॉल्ड द टोकेन्स so now you have understood the difference between the lexemes and tokens is that is that whatever you have written in your source program that is considered as the lexemes whatever you have written in the source program is considered as a lexemes whereas whatever you have written that what you have written that is int is what is the keyword identifier then punctuation it is nothing but that token so now you have understood the lexemes and tokens we will be understanding it later on with some few examples as well so let us consider the examples okay so let us move to the examples so here is the first examples problem number 1 what are you given is that count the number of tokens and here is the source program that is written in the c language int main and open and closed bracket and there is the open and closed curly braces as well as there is a line of comment and there is a variable declaration assignment and then returning zero means it is indicating that the source program is ended with the providing zero because why it is returning zero because the main function is of integer type and it is nothing but the return type value so it is returning the integer value so that that's why we have to return the value of 0 okay so in this way we are giving a source program and now you have to understand the number of tokens present in it so let us move on to that so let us consider so what we have till now read that tokens is nothing but the sequence of character okay so let us move int int is the sequence of character it is a token main main is a sequence of character it is a token open bracket it is a sequence of character it is a token then closed bracket it is a sequence of character it is a token so int is 1 and main is 2 and it is a 3 and it is a 4 so total there are four number of tokens present in the one line first line of the source program now in the second line there is only curly braces so it is the number fifth token now what about what about another things what about another thing that is the comment line so let us understand that one also so in the tokens generally comments are written in the program in order to make the programmer understand why the below lines is written means it is a guide of the below lines suppose you have written a line of code which is very well confusing to the another program then you will have to declare some comments line in order to make the other programmer to understand that what is here so you will have to write the comments line but the comments line have no the comments lines have no use with the compiler that's why the compiler will not consider the comments line hence the comments line will be ignored by the compiler okay so it is nothing but the ignorance of the compiler so it will not be considered as an a token so now you will have to understand the next line that is int a comma b and then semicolon then it will be uh, understand by the compiler it will be understood by the compiler so let us uh, uh, understand it okay number 1 is that let us clear all these messy things that i have missed it right now on the screens so now let us move on to the next line that is int int is the keyword so it is predefined in the compiler so we will be considering this sixth token and now it is a it is nothing but identify it is the seventh token then punctuation or you can say column it is a comma so it is considered as the eighth and b is the ninth and it is the 
सेमी कॉलम दैट इज कंसिडर्ड एज द टेंथ सो अप टिल हेयर वी हैव गॉट इन द टेन नंबर ऑफ टोकन सो लेट एस मूव ऑन टू द नेक्स्ट लाइन दैट इज ए इक्वल टू टेन दैट इज द वैल्यू ऑफ टेन इज असाइनिंग इज बींग असाइन टू ए वेरिएबल ए सो इट इज ए इज नथिंग बट द इलेवेंथ टोकन एंड इक्वल टू इज नथिंग बट द ट्वेल्थ टोकन एंड टेंथ इज नथिंग बट द थर्टींथ टोकन सेमी कॉलम इज नथिंग बट द फोर्टींथ टोकन सो अप टिल हेयर वी हैव have gotten the 14th token okay Up till here we have gotten the fourteenth token. So now return. It is a keyword. So fifteenth token zero. It is a integer. It is a sixteenth token. Semicolon is nothing but the seventeenth token. And last is the curly braces. That is the eighteenth token. We have gotten our answers. So this is how you will be counting the number of tokens. So if there is a question in your examination, you will be just writing the number of tokens you have founded. in your source program that is a given source program in your examination okay but be assured that if there is any comment you will not be considering is even a single token you will have to avoid it you will have to think like a compiler if you are a compiler you will not consider this as a token so let us move to the next line okay this is the second source program which is given here and again the same uh, instruction is given to the to count the number of tokens so int main curly braces so here up till here it is the fourth and uh, curly braces is fifth printf printf is nothing but a keyword so it will be considered as six open bracket is the seventh and be remember be remembered it is it must be remembered that the open inverted comma and closed inverted comma which is whatever is written within it must be considered as a single token because compiler does not have any use with this uh, syntax which is written over here it just have to print it and show it to the end user so it will be considered as a single token by the compiler that's why it is taken as a single token now up to up till here we have gotten 1 2 3 some messy parts are here so 1 2 3 4 it is a 4 it is a 5 it is a 6 it is a 7 then it is 8 then it is 9 then it is 10 so it up till here we have gotten the 10th return is a 11th 0 is a 12th and it is a 13th and at last we have gotten the 14th number of tokens so this is how you will be having the questions in your examination you will have to consider it now few more things i would like to tell you that if there is equal to so it is a, uh, it is a equal to sign so might be equal to is a of to use if there is written that a equal to equal to b then it is used to compare the value of a and b then if it is a two then you will have to consider it is a single token and if it is a single suppose a equal to 10 semi colon so you will have to consider these equal as a single token but whenever you will have uh, you will be given two equal to then you will also have to consider as a single token so first of all if it is there then you will have to look ahead you will have to look ahead if it is a uh, single uh, if it is a single or paired if it is a paired then you will have to considered as a single token okay so this is the most important word in the same way if it, there is a plus so a plus plus there is a single line of source program and a equal to b plus 1 okay it is also plus operator so here it is the uni operator it is the binary operator so uh, sorry here it is the uni operator here it is the binary operator so here it is nothing but having the single variable but here it is uh, having the 
टू वेरिएबल्स है फर्स्ट इज बी एंड अनदर इज वन विच इज विच इज बींग स्टोर्ड इन द वेरिएबल ए सो नाउ यू विल हैव टू कंसिडर दैट प्लस इज कमिंग एज अ सिंगल और डबल so whenever there will be double plus then you must have to consider as the increment operator so it will be considered as a single token in that case also and whenever it will be only single plus it will be also considered as a single token so this is the another point in the same way you will have to consider that if the minus sign is there then you will have to see look ahead you will have to see the next word also so if there is another minus then it is a decrement operator so you will have to consider this as a single token as well so in this way you will be counting the number of tokens present in the source program okay now let us move on to the difference between the lexemes tokens and patterns that is the most ask the question in the examinations what are the difference between lexemes tokens and patterns students generally confused gets confused in between the difference of the lexemes token and patterns so you will have to understand lexeme is said to be a sequence of character as i have told you it is nothing but the sequence of character or you can say the instance of a token and token is a sequence of characters that can be identified as a single logical entity so if it is given there a plus plus so how many lexemes are there there are 1 2 3 lexemes are there but how many tokens are there it is also 3 because a is an identifier it is an uh, incrementer operator it is a punctuator so you will be considering this as a three tokens so you have understood that the what by question by wh word what it is is the token by uh, by the way if you are writing a plus b and it is being stored into the variable c okay so c a b plus equal are the lexemes but what is c c is an identifier what is a a is an identifier what is b b is an identifier so token is the name of that word token is the noun of that word you can say that general name of that word is nothing but identifier so if you are being asked that what is lexemes and tokens you just simply give this example c equal to a plus b semicolon then you will have to tell that 1 2 3 4 5 6 there are six lexemes and six tokens as well because c is an identifier whereas c itself is a lexemes so i hope you have understood now pattern pattern is a set of strings described by rule called patterns a pattern explains what can be a token and these patterns are defined by means of regular expression that are associated with the tokens so it means that whatever the rules you are following to generate the line of code a equal to equal to it is a it is a valid line of code but when you will be writing a plus 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 so it does not mean that it will be incrementing its value four times it does not means it is a wrong syntax and it will be considered as an error so that's why pattern is a set of string that describes the rule called patterns so the rule which we are following to generate the lexemes is called patterns and what is the word inside the lexemes So suppose i have written a plus plus so a is what is a so a is nothing but the identifier it is a token not the a is a token a is what the name a is what it is a keyword it is considered as a token plus plus is what it is a increment operator so it is a token semicolon is what punctuator it is a punctuation so it is a token operator punctuation symbols strings identifier suppose i have written here suppose we have taken the examples okay uh, a equal to uh, is uh, suppose we have written a equal to b plus 2 okay so b is getting the value of 2 which is being stored in the variable a so and there is a semicolon as we have the full stop in our english language in order to make the reader 
to understand that it is the full stop and it is the line of sentence is uh, stopping here that that's why we are using the semicolon in order to make the compiler understand that it is the finish of the line of code so a equal to b plus 2 a is what identify it is a token b is what equal to it is the operator it is a token b is uh, equal to and what is b b is an identify it is a token plus is what operator it is a token 2 is what it is an uh, integer it is a token and uh, what is semicolon you can say is a constant as well okay 2 is constant because the number of uh, 2 that is a uh, value of 2 is uh, constant in the universe you cannot tell that in america 2 value has a 3 2 is equal to 3 it will be equal to 2 in the america as well okay so you cannot tell it okay so it is a constant and a pattern so what we are writing whether it is under the rules of grammar under the rules of syntax writing the syntax whether we are following the syntax so it is called the pattern okay so now you have understood the lexemes tokens and patterns so if you guys have understood something and uh, uh, some doubts are being cleared from here then please like the video and do share it to your friends who needs it the most okay thank you for the upcoming lectures okay thank you for watching up till here and keep learning keep studying to earn very well okay thank you very much